This is the Be Energy Wear podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Be Energy Wear podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Katanik. Let's keep in touch on Instagram at Be Energy Wear or through our website, BeEnergyWear.com. If you like this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. As we come to the end of another year, I have to say that there is much to celebrate. Creating and expressing is not only healing, but it also keeps us motivated and inspired. It really does make our lives better. I encourage you to celebrate even the tiniest success, even if you don't think much of it at the moment. Let's celebrate coming this far and doing the best we can. Today's episode is the top 5 countdown of 2022, episode number 5 to episode number 1. As usual, I'm going to announce them one by one. So number 5 is stepping up. Stepping up. Stepping up when it comes to what? Let's say stepping up when it comes to doing the right things for yourself every single day. This requires a high level of awareness and constant alertness around observing yourself. Still, I believe we can all do it with a smile on our face. But what is the reason behind doing it? Feeling good would be one. Having balance would be another one. Then fulfillment, inner peace, joy, and inspiration. When we do things right, we keep getting inspired, and we do not mind making the extra effort. We are then happy to do what's difficult. First step is to have a chat with ourselves and make a decision to start listening to our inner voice. Many times decisions are made from thinking instead from feeling. For example, we can think that something is a great idea, but when we feel into it, it doesn't feel great, and many times, it doesn't even feel good. Why is that the case? Because it's not aligned with who we are and with what works for us. Our body knows and will always give us signals. Going back to stepping up, how about always stopping and taking the time to check how we feel about something before jumping in? Sometimes our mind will try to trick us by letting us see a beautiful image that looks promising, which will in turn make us feel great, and then we get taken by that image and we think that we feel great about this thing, whatever it is, and so we decide to go for it. And soon, we get hugely disappointed. This happens to everyone at some point in their life. We can learn from it and not do it again. Remembering to pause and breathe first. Clearing the mind and feeling peaceful. And then from that peaceful place, we tune into whatever it is that we need to make the decision about. We will know right away if it's a yes or no. Once we get into a habit of doing this, life gets more enjoyable because it's filled with things that reward us. This is how to best start stepping up. Okay, next one, number four, is about inner child work. Things that are simple sometimes work the best. And because they are so simple, they are easily overlooked. What are the basics that we need, but that we've never been given or are not used to receiving? Our needs have most likely not been met when we were growing up. If you're by some chance an exception, then you're so lucky because you were spared from a lot of suffering. But the rest of us, we had to make our way through life the hard way, learning through very painful experiences. This in turn gave us many opportunities to be reminded about our needs and about what's really important. We needed these experiences to basically learn to parent ourselves and to always give ourselves what we need, 
but only if we've been paying attention. This is the part that's not easy. To catch ourselves in reaction or trauma paralysis and at the same time to be able to respond appropriately and take care of our inner child. I've said it before and I'm saying it again. Even if inner child work was the only type of healing work we ever did, we would eventually completely heal. I definitely think that we cannot do without it, if we are to function at our optimum. Where to start? I would say start by taking some time regularly, even daily, to be with your inner child, so that there is a relationship created. Just be with the child, listen to the child, let the child know that you are there. Once the relationship is formed, the child starts to trust you, which means that he or she will be paying attention when needed. This will make handling emotional situations and triggers much easier for you. Again, only if you're alert in those moments and aware when they happen, so that you can respond appropriately. So what does the child need in those type of situations? Mostly comforting and knowing that you are there to handle the situation and to provide protection and support. Remember to always be gentle with the child. Number three is there is no formula. Today I want to talk about why there is no formula that can be applied that would work for everyone. When I think about the uniqueness of every single person I've ever met, it only makes sense to assume that all of them will each do things differently. Even when it comes to a specific thing, and even the same thing, when different people, for example, want to achieve success in the same line of work, they're going to have to each do it differently, unless they work for someone else who's dictating how things need to be done. And if that's not aligned with them, they're not going to be happy. It all comes down to aligning everything with who we are at our core. And to do that, we have to really know ourselves and be clear on our values. Sometimes things just don't feel right, and then we know that we need to change them so that they feel right. So when someone comes to you with a recipe for success or tries to give you advice, especially if it's unsolicited, you have to really question it and see what they're saying is right for you. Is it aligned with your values? Those who are clear on their values are not going to let anyone influence their decisions. They're going to stand strong and do what feels right for them. Things like guilt could get in the way, but only temporarily. If you have guilt that you carry inside of you, that someone put on you, it is good to release it. You can use any of the energy releasing and healing methods that I had talked about in some of the previous episodes. Some inner child work might be needed as well. We are all different and have different needs and values. And even if we have the same background or similar life experiences, it doesn't mean that we responded to them in the same way. We all get shaped differently by them. One thing remains certain. No matter your background or your life experiences, you have a chance to find out what works for you and do everything in your own unique way. Next one is number two. You are creative. Let's have a listen to it one more time. We are all creative, and all of us create and shape our life every single day by making decisions. So what exactly does the creative process do for us? There are different benefits we can get out of it, and if we learn to apply creativity in all areas of our life, the possibilities are endless. It comes down to creating good habits, purpose of which 
is to nourish this creativity and then intentionally apply it wherever and whenever we want to. Do you remember how playful you were as a child? That's exactly what's needed here. Joyful, judgment-free exploring. Just having fun and seeing what happens. Another word that goes hand in hand with creativity is expression. When we create, we get to express ourselves and put our own stamp on it. This unique stamp contains the very essence of us. Expression is important for our own healing. To understand what our essence is and to bring it out, we need to know ourselves well and be able to make our own decisions. Meditation is a great tool to use for this. It comes down to spending quiet time with ourselves to listen and observe. We take notes and we learn a lot about ourselves. But the biggest challenge is to stay creative and keep expressing our essence in front of the world. To keep being ourselves against all odds and sometimes very harsh judgment. It takes a true warrior to do this. We need to fiercely and passionately stand our ground and keep moving forward, keep creating, keep expressing. Inner strength is needed and we need to cultivate it. Just remember, you are creative and you need to fight for this creativity and nurture it and keep it safe and then express it fully. It might take time. But as you do this, you reap the benefits. And the last episode in our top five countdown of 2022 is number one. The most important thing about energy. Obviously, it really is the most important episode of 2022. Let's have a good listen to it one more time. I've already talked so much about energy that today I want to sum it up into what I feel is most important. We can be very aware of our own energy, other people's energy, and the energy of our environment. We can know how to clear our energy, maintain it, protect it, and change it. But what really matters in the end is where we direct our energy. What are we putting our energy into every single day? Are we focused on things that give us more good energy back? Or are we wasting our energy on things that pull us down and drain and deplete our energy? To me, those are the most important things to pay attention to. As always, we need to really observe ourselves every day, observe our thoughts and our actions, and see how we feel. We also need to monitor our energy level. Consistently high energy levels tell us that we're on the right track with our life, doing the things that inspire us and fulfill us. Whenever our energy goes down, we need to know why. We need to be efficient with our energy and apply daily self care. Once again, when we direct our energy right, we get more good energy back. Conserving our energy is something to also pay attention to. We do not need to be doing something all the time. If we set time aside for not doing, that can make a huge difference for the better. Okay, thank you again for being here. As always, feel free to get in touch with your thoughts and suggestions. Message me on Instagram at BeEnergyWare, or leave a comment. You can also get in touch through my website, BeEnergyWare.com, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts is always so much appreciated. And if you're looking to empower yourself, then get my audiobook, Get Empowered, or sign up for my mentorship. Thanks for tuning in. Now on to the next year. I'll talk to you soon.